Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a film from New Zealand, and New Zealand seems to have a good reputation for producing uh, interesting content, especially within the realm of horror. New Zealand did bring us the uh, wonderful early works of Peter Jackson, such as Bad Taste, Dead Alive, or a movie that I may eventually talk about on here at some point, Meet the Feebles. But for right now, we're going to be talking about Black Sheep. This movie that came out in 2006. This is, again, like Poultry Guys, another movie that I remember coming out and I kind of like was like, put it on the Netflix queue as soon as it's released, because no theater around me is going to show this trash. So the movie opens up on a sheep farm. We have a father and his son and some other kid that's there too, and then the one kid's brother. We're kind of getting introduced to all of our uh, main characters in their youth. Basically, uh, these kids we will see grown up later on. Uh, but anyway, the main kid is Henry, and uh, he ends up having a traumatic experience because uh, his brother Angus seems to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, like messed up in the head or something. Angus kills a sheep and then like wears its like hide over his, its bloody hide over his body. And he's got a sheep head on him and he scares the bejesus out of his brother Henry. And Henry is like, oh my god, he, well, it's a little bit more drastic than that. He really freaked out. Then in the midst of these shenanigans, they're informed that their father has just died because I guess he fell off a cliff or something. So anyway, these are some pretty traumatic events, and we skip ahead into uh, the present. So Henry now currently has a bit of a sheep phobia, it would seem. Understandable, considering... Weird, I guess there's a word for like a sheep phobia. I don't know anybody that actually has a sheep phobia, but I can say that sometimes sheep creep me out a little bit. Uh, I do remember when I was a child, my grandmother had this room just filled with a bunch of like dolls, and some of them were like these like sheep people, like they were like sheep children with like little sailor uniforms on and stuff, and they were just kind of weird looking. Like it didn't cause any serious long term effects like it did to this guy in the movie, but. Uh, yeah, it did creep me out a little bit. So I guess Henry's therapist suggested that he goes back to his childhood home, which is the farm, so that he can, I guess, work some things out or whatever. Because, I mean, it is only kind of his brother's fault. You know, his brother who is now running the farm, uh, that he has this horrible uh, sheep phobia. And uh, he doesn't seem to care about the fact that he's caused his brother a, a lifetime of psychological harm. Meanwhile, while that's going on, we got some activists uh, doing some activist stuff. They're like, I don't know, hippie, protester, vegetarian types. It's kind of funny comparing this movie to Poultry Geist, which had a very pro-vegetarian vibe to it, or at least that's kind of the <laughs> what I seem to be getting. This one almost seems like it's a little anti-vegetarian, not in an, in an extreme way, but just kind of like it is more open to showing how kind of annoying some of these people can be. Uh, more so the, uh, the, the dude vegetarian here. Um, I, di I didn't write his name down. Um, I, I'm just kind of referring to them as Lady Vegetarian and Dude Vegetarian. This is just how we do things on this review show. It's a dumpster fire. But anyway, they're snooping around on the farm because, you know, they're subjecting animals to sadistic uh, stuff or whatever they do on farms. I don't know. Uh, and snooping around this area of the farm, it's like some sort of laboratory where they got weird genetic experiments going on. We'll get into that more later. But anyway, Dude Vegetarian ends up nabbing this vial of, I guess it's like just some sort of like toxic content or whatever. I don't know. There's like a sheep fetus in it. Or whatever. He nabs it because he's going to use that as evidence to expose these guys and get them shut down. But they end up chasing after him and he trips and the vial breaks. This weird sheep fetus thing ends up like coming to life and attacks him and it's like super disgusting looking. The special effects in this movie are great, top-notch, by the way. But anyway, he gets bit by the sheep thing, which will, I don't know, probably infect him or something. I guess we'll see. So anyway, we get back to Henry, and he almost gets his brains blown out by uh, Mrs. Mack, who is, uh, I don't know, like their old nanny or something. I, I forget their relation. Just sort of an old lady that does cooking around the house and stuff, you know. Make it haggis and tea. What a cliche. He catches up with her, and then he catches up with his brother who is, I guess, preparing to give some sort of a speech later because he's going to be revealing something for uh, his farm business. And then that's when uh, Henry comes by and says, Hey, I just, you know, therapist said I should come here. 
because it's totally all your fault that I'm a mess, but whatever. But anyway, they have a little bit of an exchange, and his brother's kind of a dick, and uh, uh, he just writes Henry a check to cover some therapy charges, mainly just to make him go away, you know, like, just get out of here. I got shady businessman, genetic science stuff to be doing, just get out of here. Go! And that probably is a good idea because he did actually take a cab to get to the farm and the meter is just running. Whatever, we can get to that later because Henry's catching up with his old friend Tucker, who we saw in the, the, the beginning has a child, and then we're seeing adult Tucker and he's like he seems like a cool dude, I guess, but that's not important because uh, while that's going on, mutant baby sheep has now crawled to the herd of all the other sheep, and now it looks like it's gonna start biting them and infecting them. Before you know it, we got just a swarm of I don't even know what you want to call them, this rabid sheep with a thirst for blood. That's the kind of movie we're watching here. But meanwhile, while that's going on, Henry and Tucker are uh, going to be driving back to the cab because, uh, you know, that meter's running. But a whole there's a vegetarian lady comes out now. She's She's got herself a, uh, a gun this time. It's like kind of like holding Tucker and Henry hostage there. Like, you're going to help me find my my other vegetarian companion who's not my boyfriend. That's a consistent thing. She really wants to make it clear they are not a thing. And they kind of have to go along with that for a bit until she kind of can't figure out how to do, undo the safety and then... Yeah. 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 Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. But then while that's going on, sheep are starting to get a little violent here and attack people. And this one guy's trying to make some spaghetti gook or whatever and he gets attacked. And then his spaghetti gook is like overheating and smoking. And uh, then Tucker, Henry, and Vegetarian Girl end up seeing this. And they're like, there's some smoke coming from that house. So they go to investigate. And that's when they end up getting chased by one of these mutant sheeps. And uh, they manage to take it out. But then they got to get from the house back into the truck. And it looks like there's more sheep starting to swarm. So the tension's starting to build a little bit. There are just rabid sheep everywhere. And uh, you know, one thing leads to another. The sheep's driving the truck off of a cliff, blows up or whatever, and also Tucker got bit by the sheep, so he's probably infected. You've heard this story a thousand times. So then Angus ends up having a run-in with the infected uh, activist, the vegetarian dude, and uh, they have a little bit of a firm exchange of words, because obviously they don't like each other too much, and uh, Angus ends up getting bit, and so now he is going to uh, be infected with rabbit sheep disease, or whatever you want to call it. Then while that's going on, we get a look at Tucker's foot, and it is now fully formed into like a sheep foot with a hoof and everything. Sheep end up chasing uh, a group into uh, the genetic lab where they end up discovering all the weird sheep experiments. And uh, boy, I tell you, I love a good mad scientist sort of horror scenario. And this one does it real good. You just got creepy things and vials and you just get a good feel for the experiments going on. You can see like there's like, you know, like scientists working there. And one of them is this like mad scientist lady and you just get a feel like she's she's pretty nuts. She, she's top tier mad scientist. She cares about her scientific stuff without thinking about how this affects anybody or how this could be a horrible thing for humanity. Mad scientists, they don't care about that. That's that's kind of what makes them mad, I guess. Uh, so they kind of find out that uh, Tucker is turning into like a sheep person and they end up kind of capturing him. Henry and vegetarian lady are thrown into a pit of meat. So they get thrown into this pit of meat, which is, I guess, just kind of like a, you know, kind of like when you're in the doctor's office and they have that bin for like needles and, you know, things that are contaminated and hazardous. I feel like they just have a big pit in the ground for that. So they get thrown in that and the sheep end up jumping in and they gotta escape through a tunnel. They do find an exit out of the tunnel though uh, and they're able to wash all of the gunk off of them. But then shortly afterwards they encounter a vegetarian guy who has now turned into a just colossal sheep beast and it is legit terrifying if you ask me. I know obviously this movie is supposed to be kind of like a, a joke a little bit, a bit on the goofy side, but it seems to ride that line of this is a horror comedy, but it also kind of has some creepy things about it. Or maybe I'm just having PSD from the sheep dolls in my grandma's house. I don't know. So then they got to get away from him. But then uh, that whole like speech that Angus was rehearsing earlier, now he's going to be doing it for real. He's getting prepped for that. It's all these like business people are showing up. Uh, even the guy from the taxi cab who has, he's just been waiting this whole time. Yeah, it's all for the big reveal of this genetically altered perfect sheep that they have created. You know, but, but things don't seem to go too great because one, Angus has been bit and he's starting to show signs of like not really being all there. Then we get a big swarm of uh, rabbit sheep come through. 
They're attacking, killing everybody. Anybody that isn't killed will eventually turn into a half-human sheep thing. It is bananas. Donut Angus is realizing now that he is turning into a sheep and that the sheep are not attacking him. So this is a key thing. If you're infected, the sheep are not going to attack you because you are one of them. So Angus ends up swiping his super sheep and takes it to his office where uh, he performs unacceptable you just kind of swing into the final act from this point on you know you're going to be seeing uh angus turning into a super sheep sheep humping a uh, sheep consuming a man alive while there's mass sheep farting going on because in new zealand i guess like i said in the last review i don't want to like give away how everything ends and all that i kind of just want to give you a brief overview of things hopefully pique your interest if you want to watch it yourself so with that said, let's get into the rating. The gore is going to be straight up 10 out of 10. This is a very, the effects are very well done and they're very disgusting. Thrills, uh, I, I didn't feel on the edge of my seat, but uh, I'll give it like maybe a 5 out of 10. For the creeps, kind of hard to say because I mean, I'm kind of like creeped out by some of the sheep visuals because of things I've explained earlier. It's not that creepy, it's more like a, like a shock and gross out kind of movie. I'm going to maybe go 3 out of 10. For the monsters, we're doing 10 out of 10. The effects are fantastic, especially for whenever you get like one of the, the super hulking sheep beasts. Those things just freak me the heck out. The story, um, I'm gonna do 8 out of 10. Um, overall, I'm gonna do a 10 out of 10. This is a pretty good movie. It's a, a good mix of horror and comedy. It's pretty fun to watch, as, as long as you're okay watching some disgusting things. I mean, it could probably just, you know, brighten your day. Or maybe I'm just sick, I don't know. But uh, see you next time, I guess. You know, there wasn't a single black sheep in this movie. 